Hey folks, welcome back. So today we're gonna do a tackle talk. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this number four Wonder Bread tungsten ice jig. So we're just gonna use some basic materials. We're gonna use some powder paint. We're gonna use some vinyl head paint, and then we're just gonna coat it with a uh, a coating of UV epoxy resin. So stay tuned. Follow me. Let's talk tackle. Okay, folks, let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna make these Wonder Bread tungsten jigs here for our pan fishing whether you're ice fishing or soft water fishing it doesn't really matter they're great for all year long so what I'm doing is I'm making one I'm making a number four tungsten slotted jig head with a number eight 90 degree Aberdeen hook and the other one here that I'm making is a caddis hook in size six it has a downturned eye and the same thing a number four slotted tungsten jig head um, I have a previous video where I showed you how to attach these components together to get this. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to continue on how to make these jigs Wonder Bread. So some uh, materials that you're going to need. Uh, you'll need some UV epoxy resin. Um, you'll need a UV light. This one had some work put on it. You can see I'm missing a leg and it's kind of dirty, but uh, this stuff usually comes together. You can get these in kits. I'll leave the link in the description below for this material here. Um, you're also going to need some Protec powder paint and it is super glow white is what we're using. That's how we get these things to glow in the dark. You're also going to need to get some vinyl lure paint. Um, I have red, yellow, and blue here, of course, because that is the Wonder Bread colors. Now, I use the hot glow yellow in this type of, of vinyl paint. I've tried the other yellows, and it just doesn't stand out. The hot yellow is what you really want to look for. Um, you're also going to need to get a bodkin or some kind of sharp implement, uh, a toothpick, and a set of hemos here. Um, you're also going to need some kind of fire source or heat source, whether you use a stick match like I use, or a lighter, or a candle, or even a heat gun. I find a heat gun's a little much for this smaller project. A lighter works just fine for me. I like, I like the stick match. Um, but yeah, any, any kind of heat source. So let's get this stuff out of the way, and I'll show you how to proceed on making these Wonder Bread tungsten jig heads. So what you're going to do here first is you're going to want to paint these white. So you're going to get your hemos here and you're going to put your your jig in the hemos just about like that. You don't want it flat. And if you check out the other videos, I'll show you how to use the how to keep these so that way you can try to keep the most amount of paint and UV resin out of the eyelet of your hook as you possibly can. Now, the the more paint you get on there, you could just swirl it all around in there if you don't mind picking the eyelet off. I really don't like picking the eyelet off, or if you don't mind a, a painted eyelet, after you dip it in there, you can take a needle or something and you could push it through the eyelet just to make a hole. Um, it's um, all a matter of preference, but I'm gonna show you here how I do it. What I found is the easiest. So you're gonna take your, uh, your powder paint here, and I stir it up with my bodkin just because I want to fluff it up some. And then I get it right about just to the edge of my container there, and then tap off my bodkin and try to stand this up to keep that little slope of, that little slope of paint going there. And I've got a paper towel over here off the side I'm just wiping my utensils off on. So what you want to do here is you want to, you want to heat this up. Now, if you watch my previous videos, you notice that you'll notice that I attach this hook to this slotted tungsten jig head with UV epoxy resin. Now, if you overheat it, it's going to compromise that that hold on there, and your your tungsten head will fall off into your paint, which that just makes a mess. I mean, you may find out for yourself, but I'm here just to try to show you how to do it to where you're not wasting material or time. So what you're going to do is you're going to get some fire rolling. And you're going to actually hold your your jig head over in the fire for, I go for about four seconds because I found that that doesn't compromise the connection between the jig head and the hook. So, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. And then what you're going to do here is you're just going to kind of swim your, your jig head here in this paint. Now, if you don't want to get any paint on the eyelid of your hook at all, I can I usually take 
a toothpick and I will get some paint on there and I will just dump it where I want the paint to go. If I want some paint on there and I don't want to have to worry about getting paint on the eyelid of the hook, I will take this time here just to dump the paint on there because it's still warm so it'll stick. And then once you get to that point, if you take this jig and you don't put it in the fire, you hold it just above the fire, say two, three inches above the fire, and you just rotate this, the heat rising will be enough that it will melt that paint for you. And then you see you'll get a nice even coat on there and it'll be that nice shiny finish. I'll take my foam here and stick this into my foam so I don't have to drop it because if it's warm and you set it down flat, you have a flat spot in there. I just get very uh, OCD, I guess, when it comes down to, to making my own tackle and stuff like this. Same thing with the Aberdeen hook. You see, you want the hook. You want to try to keep the eyelet up. This one's much easier to use, the Aberdeen hooks. Now, I haven't found a big difference in using a caddis hook or using an Aberdeen hook other than the fact of creating these things and it's much easier to keep the paint off the eyelid of the hook with the Aberdeen hooks. So once again we're gonna do some more fire for four seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four. And then once again you're just gonna take it down into your paint and you're gonna move it around and trying not to get that paint on the eyelid of the hook and once again if you have a little bare spot here like that you just get a little bit more paint and come over here and dump it on there give it a little tap and then some more some more heat action here so once again once again we're gonna go above the flames probably two inches or so maybe even three because if you put this into that fire after you put your paint on there, what's going to happen is it's going to turn black on you. It's going to char and it's going to turn black. And now you see we got that nice, that nice uh, glossy finish coat of white glow in the dark paint. And you didn't compromise the connection here between your hook and your jig head. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this Aberdeen hook on the foam and I'm going to get my cat is hook onto my Hemos because now we're going to add color to this. So taking your vinyl paint and I like to shake it up, you know, and sometimes I'll tap it against the palm of my hand a few different ways just to get the paint to mix up in there. Um, it shouldn't really be super watery, but it shouldn't be super gummy either. Like if you get paint that gets real gummy, you can add some, some acetone to this. You can add uh, uh, lacquer thinner, paint thinner, whatever you have handy, any kind of thinner. They sell the thinner for this, but you know, I always find an alternate that I already have. I'm not going to go spend $3 for a little jar of paint thinner when I have a gallon jug of acetone out in the garage so yeah but you can get acetone anywhere also if you're using colors if you do happen to just go buy some acetone a small bottle for fingernail polish removal or whatever make sure you get the clear stuff don't get the pink stuff because it will actually tint this paint it'll make it look off so once we shake up our paint here I do all of them the yellow the blue you can tap it on your table it's in a glass container but you want to smash them together so I just give them a little taps here just enough to get that paint mixed up in there all right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our toothpick here and we're gonna start with our yellow And then this stuff is super pungent. So if you can do this outside or in the garage or somewhere with excellent ventilation is better than in the house. But you're not, you don't have to get a ton of paint on there. You just have to get enough to get a little drip. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna touch this jig. Now if you're pulling it up and you notice a string coming off, just rotate your toothpick until you get that little string of paint off of there. And then I'll put another dot over here. I only use three dots of each color most times on these small panfish jigs because I'm not trying to overwhelm it with color. I'm just trying to get enough on there to make it the Wonder Bread pattern. 
So another one here. So depending on the size of the the size of the jigs that you're trying to make or lures or whatever it is that you're trying to make Wonder Bread. I mean, you can use this system on anything from crankbaits to to spoons to anything. And I'm going to add a little more paint because it dries pretty quick and it started to dry on me there because I'm talking more than I am working here. So I just want to touch a little bit more paint on there and then another little yellow spot there. And I take my paper towel and wipe off the excess paint. Now this stuff dries pretty quick so you want to make sure that you keep these jars closed and sealed when you're really not using them um, because it'll thin out pretty quick on you. I'm sorry, it'll thicken up pretty quick on you. And then you just use your acetone or whatever. Now I'm just going to use the other side of this toothpick for the blue. So once again, just go in, get another little dab of blue on the end of your toothpick. Doesn't have to be much. Remember, less is more when it comes down to these panfish jigs. So a little tiny dot of blue there. I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom here. little tiny dab of blue. And then I'm going to do right up here, I say, right here. That looks like a spot for a blue dot. And then since I already have blue on there, I'm going to do this because I'm making both of these. So another little blue dot there. We'll put one right up here on his crown. And then we'll move on to the other side with this other blue dot. There we go. And that's it. And then you're wiping off your toothpick again because, like I said, this stuff dries pretty quick. So you don't have to go through a ton of material here. But you can use the other side of this toothpick that you had yellow on there because the yellow is already dry. So once again, since it's sat a little, I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake here. You just want the consistency of that paint. That's all. And then once again, the red, and then you just pick spots to make your dots. Hey, I like that, that kind of rhymes. And then you just touch it here, another little red dot, and then we'll put one right back here on the back. That looks like a good spot for a red spot. And then here we'll do it again on this other jig. Just a little red dot there. A little red dot here rolling that because my paint is actually starting to dry a little bit so I'm starting to get a little string coming off of there and I just like it to be uniform and actually I'm gonna put a dot on the bottom side of this I don't know if you can even see that but I'll put another little red dot down here oh I need a touch more paint there for that one because it dried up so fast. So, there we go. Wipe off your toothpick. Toss it to the side. Close your paint up. Okay, and then that's it. Now you are done putting your powder paint, your glow-in-the-dark powder paint, and your dots on your jig. Now, this powder paint does take a little bit of time, or the, I'm sorry, the vinyl paint. I'm sorry, this vinyl paint does take a little bit of time to dry on here. So I actually pre-made a couple more and let them dry um, just so that way we could keep moving forward because nobody loves, likes to sit around and watch paint dry. So we'll set these ones off to the side. Now we're going to put our clear coat of UV resin on here. So I will take my Aberdeen hook here and I've already poured a little bit of clear UV resin inside this cup and if you see I cut down this disposable medicine cup if you watch my other video you'll know why I did that but once you get some in there all you're gonna do is you're gonna swim this jig back and forth through this resin without getting anything on the eye of the hook now it's okay if you don't get it totally submerged because you can see there's a drip forming here now don't let it drip off yet you want to use that drip to go around the spots that you didn't get because you don't want to cover up the eyelet of your hook. Anything to keep it from being compromised, in my opinion, is better for knot tying and for the foundation of your jig. All right, I let a little bit go down here on the hook, letting that drip work around. And then you'll see, I'll just let this drip just about fall off of here but then I'll touch it back to my resin to give it like, I don't know, I call it like a siphon effect on there because it actually pulls the excess resin off of the jig head because you only want a thin clear coat on this. 
And then you're gonna set your jig off or your UV resin off to the side. And as you're rotating this, and if you watch my other video, you'll know the why I rotate this is to keep that drip moving around on there uniform and uniformly. So what I'm gonna do here is hit this light and just keep rotating this. And it's gonna harden that UV resin up on there and give you a nice clear coat that's gonna be chip resistant on your paint. You won't start losing your colored dots on your Wonder Bread and it actually gives more integrity to the jig and hook, the jig head and hook connection. So it makes it a little bit tougher jig. And who doesn't like that? You can use a jig for more than a couple dozen fish is always a good thing. Okay, and then once that's cured, you could stick it on there. Boy, you could see those things are already glowing. And then I'm going to grab my other one here. Now these caddis hooks are a little bit more tricky with your UV resin, so you want to make sure that you don't get that eyelet covered because you can see how close you can see how close the eyelet is there to your jig of your or your jig head as to where the Aberdeen you have some room for error there. So I just bring this in and I bring it and swim it just enough to get a nice drip on there. And I use that drip to totally cover up this jig. Now it's going to take a little bit. It won't take as long as you think. But just use that drip to your advantage to cover this jig than submersing the whole thing. Because it's very difficult to get that eyelid of that hook clean once you've hardened that resin up on there. And it really doesn't come off of there very easy if it's wet. So just using that drip as much as possible to get under the eyelid of that hook and make sure that you're getting a complete coverage on there. And that's it. And just let that jig or that UV resin work its way around that jig head so you get a nice even coat on there. And then once it starts to drip off, I dip it back in to let it get that little siphon effect to pull off any excess off of the jig. And then once again, hitting it with the UV light and just rotating it nice and slow so you don't get too much drip in one place or not enough in another. And that's it. And just cure these jigs up. And they glow in the dark like crazy too. It's a beautiful thing. That glow in the dark paint is something else. All right. And then you could just stick these in here like that. Well, folks, that's it. That's how you make some Wonder Bread ice jigs for panfish uh, using a 90 degree Aberdeen hook and using a number six cat is hooked there um i'm gonna let these cure for a little while but if you like this video give me a big thumbs up uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button share this video if you like this video i'd love to see some comments of you guys that made your own uh even some fish that you've taken with them so go ahead and get out on the water get in your tackle shop get some stuff go fishing